Hi guys, thank you for joining us. We have an exciting lineup for you today, but first, a peek at what's coming up. A group of teenagers in Bomasi in the eastern region have dropped out of school. We'll tell you why. More than 100 homes demolished at Pokwasi, a town close to Accra. And we'll tell you what some of you think you deserve to know. My name is Amma. You're watching News Generation. Stay with us. News Generation, supported by Carbell with Vitamin. Now, more than a hundred homes have been demolished at Pokwasi, a town close to Accra. The Gang West Municipal Assembly says the structures were destroyed because they were built illegally. Residents, including some children, complained as their homes were pulled down. Two bulldozers with over a hundred security personnel from the military and the police demolished the structures. The victims said they were not given any notice. They watched helplessly as their structures were pulled down. Some of them lamented they had nowhere to go. They have destroyed my father's house. We were not given any notice. We don't have any place to sleep. Any demolition exercise is coming on. When they're trying to demolish anything, and they will compensate each and everyone whose house is involved on authorized structure. But now look at what they've done. Just go through. Just look at. You can see it through your cameras. Just look at. They are just demolishing everything without any compensation. Gang West Municipal Chief Executive Sam Atukwe Kwe rejected claims the assembly did not give them notice of the exercise. We had our van going around doing this work. Quite apart from that, we also pasted notices on almost all these um, structures. And then we also wrote on them with our normal red ink, hoping that they will all go. To be very honest, some complied, some left. But others, like the Noah's Ark, decided that they will not go into the Ark, even though the world was coming to an end. The exercise, according to the assembly, is to make way for an extension of the Accra and Sawam Highway. The authorities say the highway extension project should ease the heavy traffic on the main Accra and Sawam Highway. Now let us know what you think about that story. It's News Generation GH on Facebook. Now give us the opportunity to be at the forefront of change. That's a message from some young leaders, some young people to lead us in the country. As the world marks International Youth Day, some young people have been sharing their views with us. This should be something that should be the norm. But of late, what we are seeing is that the old men or those um, who have actually passed their prime are still holding poor position in the country. They are not letting go of those bigger positions so that the youth will take over because they are clinching on to what God knows what. So the youth, some of us are actually reluctant to actually get into ventures such as holding positions. But um, in other sectors also, we are seeing the government trying to um, in, push certain young ministers like the uh, Deputy Minister for Education, Honorable um, Ablakwa and the rest, they have been given such mandates because they are youth, they are vibrant. But um, overall, I'll give, I'll, I'll say 60% of the youth haven't been given that opportunity to actually express themselves because the older men and women are still clenching on to their positions. Let me pick, pick your thoughts on this, um, Godwin. Do you think young people in this country are at the forefront of, you know, championing development? Yeah, I think so because mostly, as Nanama said earlier on, um, those who are, let me say, a bit grown, the old people, are always given the chance to, like, occupy the whole thing. But if we, the young people, are given the chance to come in, I mean, we have the energy, we have the knowledge fresh and everything, and I think we'll make everything even more, um, let me say, qualitier than what the old people are doing, you understand? But what do you say to those who think that, you know, young people are not stepping up for, for these opportunities? I will go against you if you say this because there are most people out there who are um, fighting to get a seat for themselves. They are ready to do whatever you... Let me say they have the energy... They, they, are, they have the fresh blood and everything. So they are always ready for everything. And I know they will put it in the right position. Either than the old people or um, the big people who are stuck into the positions. Gordon, I'll come to you now. Now let's talk about your own challenges that you face as 
young people, you know, growing up in this part of our world. What are the pertinent challenges that you face daily? I mean, as, as a young person who, you know, is yearning to achieve something for yourself. Yeah, um, <laughs> I would say I've always wanted to be a newscaster. It's something that I really love doing. So anytime I go for auditions, they tell me that I'm small, but I'm good. I'm small, but I have it in me. If you know I'm good, give me the chance to do it. Nanama, you still have something to contribute in the midst of these challenges. What can the youth still offer this country in, in spite of the challenges that we all face? I think personally, as youth, we should actually identify our personal goals, regardless of the fact that the nation may or the society may not support us, we should be able to personally know what we are about in the world and then take steps, because the moment you take a step, you get somebody to support you. I mean, the guy who, who started with these um, local shoes that the president even had to get some for himself, I mean, we, we have no idea where he started from. Statistics from the 2015 WASI show failure in two core subjects, mathematics and science. The percentage of students who failed is alarming and many Ghanaians are unhappy about it. Some of you have been speaking about this issue. The results of this year's WASI have been released, but out of a total of 268,812 students, 99,917 failed science and mathematics. So what is it about these two subjects that students of senior high school find it very difficult to pass? So with me are some students of top accountancy school to think through this. So guys, one thing that um, students have in mind is that mathematics is a very difficult subject. Mathematics and science. So even at the mere mention of the subject, you realize that they have this panic within them. So when it happens that whatever the teacher teaches, they don't understand. Also, when they mention sometimes when the teacher, because of the, they think that the subject is difficult, so they don't come to school during uh, math and science sections. I think um, with these two subjects, we need a very long time to study it. And um, those days, I think they were having this um, a longer system of education which aided them to pass very well. But now we have short terms of education, like we use two and a half years to study two, these two subjects, which will definitely not help. To add up to what she said, now we have um, one person is expected to pass about nine, or if I'm right, either nine or eight subjects. Now with that, even four years, you wouldn't be able to cover all the syllabus. So what, what, what is the expectation? So now, at first it was at four years, and then it has come back to three years, meaning there's a shift. So even four years, they're not able to cover the syllabus. How much more three years? We must know that math and science are practical subjects, and teaching, teaching and learning must, materials must be facilitated so that it enhances more learning. So if the, the teachers in uh, rural areas don't have most of the materials to learn, uh, so how would they teach the students? So that they must, so that they get the understanding much easier and faster. Having identified the some of the causes or the reasons why uh, we we always feel the sub those two subjects, how can we deal with this situation? I think before dealing with before um, searching for the solution, sometimes the examiners they also contribute to the failure because um, there is a perception that they, they said the more you mark. The more you, the more money you get. So they just, they don't follow the steps. All they need is the answer. And with math mathematics, you can have your methods might be right, but your answer will. And you you need to gain uh, marks for those those methods. Not not um, the final answer. The final answer might just gain you just one mark by a method, but. They just look for it. They just look for the, uh, the answer, and when the answer is wrong, they mark everything down, which is not fair. You realize that if you go to any school and they ask the students, "What do you want to be in future?" None of them will say, "I want to be a teacher." Why? So I suggest that this uh, government system, our, our educational system, is is crude. Yes, it's very very crude. Because how can you be paying somebody who taught you to be who you are less, and then you'll be taking higher amount at least? They should also enjoy some benefit. Even at times, it puts teachers off. Much of them don't do the agri part. So the teachers, that part, and mostly that part too, comes in the, uh, the WASI. 
So the teachers, the, so you have to create like aspect teachers teaching the integrated science. I will entreat every parent that when their words are going, they should be disciplined. Discipline is the word. If you, the parent, is di disciplined, definitely your word is going to take it from you. But if you are not disciplined, how do you expect your child to be disciplined? And then all this burden, you bring it to school for the teacher. And then here lies the case, the teacher is not treated well by the government. What do you expect them to do? Definitely, they also fold their, their arms and they look at your words, whether they fail or they pass. They are not sending it to the, 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 their homes. So definitely, you send it to your home and they can face whatever is there. When we come back, we tell you why a group of girls in the eastern region have dropped out of school. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, there's been a lot of controversy on the things children should know. We've been asking you what you think you deserve to know. You have the right to know at what age you must start dating. The um, perennial power outages. We've cried out loud for a long time. We don't know what's the improvements. We don't have any improvements. So you need to know what's happening there. In Ghana, most children are told to be seen and not heard. Indirectly, this means ask no questions and almost always just do as you're told. You don't have to know until you're older. That has been the culture for many years. But not 13-year-old Denise Frantic. She wants to know everything. I think children deserve to know everything which is they are involved in, in their decision. When their parents plan to send them to a secondary school, they should be involved. If their parents plan to send them to their cousin's house, they should be involved. I don't think that parents should make decisions without the youth because it's really necessary. This is a rare privilege Denise's mother sometimes got. Our parents are so restricted. When you want to ask them something, it's very difficult. You feel shy to approach them. But one Denise's grandmother hardly ever got. There was a lot of discipline in my time. These days, children find things very easy with their parents. When I was young, we were scared to even approach our parents to ask them for anything. I had a tough time. My friend is there. But Denise has a voice. Your friend is you can see it in the way she interacts with her family and friends on a weekly show that talks about children's issues in Ghana, ranging from entertainment to child rights. My grandmother is basically one, she's been raised in a mod in the times where you are supposed to be seen and not heard. So when she says things which are incorrect and I kind of correct her, then it goes like, shut up, shut up, you're not allowed to talk. And I go like, oh, grandma, but this one too, I know it, then we start arguing. Wow. Yes, I am allowed to speak. It's not the normal routine that children are meant to be seen but not heard. In my house, you are meant to be seen and heard. And that's how Denise is encouraged to know more. What are some of the ways you have access to information? Inform oh, yes. mostly, th mostly through my friends. Through your um, friends? Television, news, <laughs> my parents. Children like Denise are privileged to be able to freely speak their minds. And Denise is an example of how Ghanaian society's attitude is changing towards young people. Let us know what you think you deserve to know. It's News Generation GH on Facebook. Many children who drop out of school attribute it to poverty or a lack of facilities in their communities but not a group of teenagers in a village in the Eastern region. The girls have, been, have dropped out of school because they have been labeled witches. Up in the hill in Bomase is a makeshift structure used as a church. It is not the kind of church where people go to pray and find peace. The people in this church are teenage girls forced here by community members because the pastor claims they are witches. The pastor had told residents of Bumase that the girls were responsible for deaths in the village. He offers to pray for such girls, but he has been physically abusing them instead, 
Some of the girls here were forced by their parents who believe the pastors claim that their children have evil spirits and need to be delivered. I am worried because um, the past 10 years I've been to this village. I have seen the progress in terms of the school that I set up. And fortunately, four years ago, government has taken it over. Though there are challenges, we are still, you know, prodding on nicely. Until a month ago, I got wind of a young pastor who is in the village accusing most of the young girls, not the boys, of being witches, killing people, and um, the peaceful community has been divided into factions of witches, wizards, the older men who are widowed are the wizards, and then the young girls are the supposed witches. And due to that, the parents have believed it, and it's affecting the girls in school. The girls are often forced to confess that they are witches. Dede was badly beaten by the pastor last week when she refused to say she was a witch. She says she refused to confess because she is not a witch. And although she told her parents about it, they did nothing. You take the case to court. You take the case to court. Emmanuel Nate Agbote, a resident of Bumwase, believes one of the girls killed his wife and newborn child. So he supports the activities of the pastor. <laughs> The pastor of the church ran into the bush when he saw the TV camera, whilst the other residents of the village refused to speak about the issue. The gender ministry has called for the arrest of the self-styled pastor who has forced the teenage girls to drop out of school. Let us know what you think of this story. Now, teachers in various basic schools in Ghana use different forms of punishment, but this one is unusual. A teacher at the Mary Mother of Good Counsel School is alleged to have taped the mouth of an eight-year-old. The teacher is said to have tied her victim's hands to his back and taped his mouth because she wanted him to be silent. The family of the boy are not only furious, they have dragged the authorities of the school to court. We've been asking you what you think about such punishments. Here's what's up. Yes, I've been punished. Okay, I went out without permission and I also came in late. I was caned. Yes, I went out without permission and I came out. I, ca I came very late and I was punished. I was punished to fetch water 10 times. So I was so tired about it. And I was also punished not to eat. My mommy sent me, but I refused to go. Yes. I was stuck for the whole day. I almost fainted. It caused pain to me very much. Please, yes. Mm, in school, I was punished um, by kneeling down and also insult at home. I've been punished in the house by um, not eating in the house. Yes, uh, if I do something bad at home. They give me a plot of land to read, but sometimes they deny me food. Yes, um, I was locked outside the gates for. My mom sent me and I got angry and said I'm not going. That form of punishment, I see it to be too much because uh, caning, caning is a corporal punishment. And also, when you are caned, if parents are caning children, they should have a limit, or teachers, they should have a limit to cane children. They shouldn't cane children over a certain number. I think it's a capital punishment because I almost died. I could die because it caused a lot of pain to me, in which I've never experienced it before. To really affect the child going up and down, getting to, okay, when he or she goes to bed, she will find it difficult to stand up because she will get body pains. Yeah, it can, yeah it's a child abuse. You don't supposed to abuse the child too much like that. It makes the child very protective when he or she is coming to school. does not have the feeling to come. Yeah, it's a training which is given to a child so that when the child grow up, he will know that what he or she is doing 
you have a limit to go. Should I not do that? I think it's good because um, without um, solving it, it may lead to any kind of uh, action. Mm, I think it's it's good because it taught me a lesson now. Whenever she says me, I have to go, otherwise I'll be locked outside again. Those, those were your views on WhatsApp. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Welcome back. The first ever Kids' Choice Awards in Ghana will be held on Saturday, 15th August. Children are expected to meet and honor their role models. Now, Kekeli Atakra, who is the marketing manager for Edibental Entertainment, join, joins us to tell us more. Welcome. Thank you. What should we expect on Saturday? A lot. A lot of fun on Saturday. A lot of fun. Kids are to see their role models, meet them personally, take pictures, whatever they want to do on Saturday. Okay, so you've been collecting votes. Yes. How has that process been? Okay, what happens is uh, we go to the schools. We chose about 20 schools in Accra, um, 20 in Kumasi, and 10 in Takradi. So we go to the school. It's a p paper voting, so it's very fair. We go and ask the children who their favorite may be movie star, music, and then they choose who their favorite is. So it's very fair. They do, it's a paper voting, so that should tell you that it was a very fair thing. But you didn't go to schools up north. You only went No, the it's... This is the very first edition, so we are a bit limited, but subsequently we'll be going. So what's happening on Saturday? Saturday, the show is going to be amazing. It's a rainbow carpet show. So first time ever, kids are going to be on the rainbow carpet, interview their favorite models while they walk into the main auditorium for the main event. And then all the stars are expected to be there yeah. on Saturday. Yes, there's going to be thrilling performances from... Some are surprises though, but we have Stoneboy on board, Double is performing, we have Tiny, we have a lot of stars performing on that day. So if you, if you love those artists, you know where to be on Saturday. Yeah. You have some surprises for us, do you? Yes, we do. Um, Indomie is going to be there live cooking for the kids. So come on time. The show starts at uh, 10 a.m. It's a day event. It starts at 10 and then the main event. 12 to 4 p.m. Okay, thank you for joining us. You're that welcome. was Kekeli Atakra of the Kids' Choice Awards Ghana, and she's been telling us all about the awards for Saturday. Now, let's take a quick trip around the world. Government says it will not pay the salaries of striking doctors and other public sector workers for the period they have stayed away from work. Doctors, university teachers, and pharmacists are all on strike over different issues. Government has described the strike by the doctors as illegal. Substitute Pedro scored an extra time winning goal as Barcelona won the UEFA Super Cup for a fifth time. Europa League winners Sevilla surprised the Champions League holders when Eva Benega netted a free kick. Lionel Messi scored two free kicks to put Barcelona 2-1 ahead before Rafinha and Luis Suarez made it 4-1. Jose Antonio Reyes, Kevin Gamero and Yavin scored goals for Sevilla, sending the match into extra time before Pedro struck. Barcelona's first success in the competition since 2011 means they joined Italian side AC Milan in winning it five times. A 16-year-old holiday maker has found a gold bar worth 16,000 euros while swimming in a lake in Germany. The teenager discovered the precious metal near a lake. She handed it to police who are now investigating where it came from and who owned it. Police divers checked the area for more gold on Tuesday but found nothing. An expert from Arizona University thinks he may have found Queen Nefertiti's tomb. The queen is thought to have been the mother of Tutankhamun, an important ancient Egyptian king. She is famous for her beauty and her powerful reign, but despite her importance in ancient Egyptian history, it's always been a mystery where she was finally buried. A leading expert on ancient Egypt thinks he might have found a hidden doorway which leads to her tomb. He looked at scans of the walls on the tomb to find secret doorways hidden beneath the plaster. Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered almost 100 years ago, but archaeologists have always wondered 
why it was so small for such an important king. Now they think it could have been added onto the side of his mother's tomb, which could be far more majestic. I get to say go Basa. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, you can join us on Facebook, News Generation GH, and at News Gen GH on Twitter. Thank you for watching. See you next time. News Generation, supported by Cowbell with Vitamin. <laughs>